Good morning, everyone. How's everyone today? So it's Wednesday, and I did not do daily devotional yesterday. Um, I stayed up on Monday night to Tuesday, and I did a wonderful full moon uh, lunar eclipse ritual. And that kind of tanked me out yesterday, but it was a really good rest day for me. Um, and then today I pulled the card Nourishment of the Soul, and it just validated for me the self-care that I've been doing. Um, it's card number 32. And um, I, I'm just really pleased with Sometimes it's hard for us to feel like when we do self-care that we're not being selfish. Sorry about that. I got cut off again. Um, it's really hard, I think, for women to, when they self-care, not feel guilty about it. Because there is this expectation that we are not enough. So many women are conditioned from an early age to do so much more to prove themselves. And I've struggled with that too. And I work really hard all the time and probably do more than I should many of the time, many cases, but that's okay. I am learning. I am working through it. Um, so this card is to remind you if you've been struggling with having your needs met on some level. You can connect with the elements to give you help, to give you more nourishment and abundance in all situations in your life. So many of our fellow brothers and sisters around the world suffer from undernourishment in not only the physical, but the emotional and psychological levels. The quest for spirituality and community and genuine connection is a part of this. You can overfeed the body to suit that craving and you will find yourself still starving. Food is not only for the body but also for the spirit. Without proper nourishment which the body needs, there is an imbalance which causes fear, resistance, anger, and defiance. The nourished body helps illuminate, feeds the mind, fortifies the soul within, and keeps us connected to the spirit in balance. Denying the needs of the body out of misplaced sense of spiritual consciousness does not further spiritual connection. The balance of body, mind, and spirit are interconnected, and the first of these is the body. Learning moderation and balance, discipline, and ethical, organic, local, and sustainable food consumption sustains the body and in turn nourishes the mind and the spirit. Science is backed up, backed us up, and backed, science does so much. Anyway, science, basically if you leave animals alone to do what nature tells them, they gravitate towards the best grasses, the natural habitat, and they come into balance on their own. Nature knows how to heal itself. Our physical manifestation as a human is a part of this natural world. If we support and balance and let our bodies guide us towards healing, listening rather than demanding, tapping into the divine feminine or masculine within us, or both, we can derive nourishment on all levels. Rather than thinking of going healthy, or going on a diet, or following a fad diet, Reframe it. Reframe it into what brings me authentic fulfillment. This turns the sacred act of nourishment into honoring the body, mind, and soul. So what brings me authentic fulfillment? Um, I wrote a prayer for today. Um... 
I pray to Mother Earth and Father Sky, my ancient ancestors and guides. I am grateful for the gift of this body connecting me to earth and water. I am grateful for the gift of this mind connecting me to fire and air. I am grateful for the gift of this spirit connecting me to the divine. I am grateful for this gift of human life. May I be supported always in the discovery of the best and most fulfilling ways to nurture myself in body, mind, and spirit. May the flow of the divine connect me authentically to the flow of my life, nurturing life around me. I pray for the support of the divine, the courage, and the wise use of my free will as a human being to nourish myself with honesty and grace. Through wisdom and grace, may all beings be fed with what is truly needed. Blessed be. I just, I sat with that for a little bit this morning and I really wanted to share that with y'all. Out of the Celtic devotional today, the life theme is, or today's theme is what skills need to come into play in your life. That one actually rung really true because <laughs> I am having to do, I'm really wanting to get all of this information that I teach on a pretty regular basis in a better format and I've been working on some things and I thought about it yesterday that I have a teaching degree I have the skills to do this and I've been kind of not applying those skills <laughs> and I thought about it yesterday like I really need to actually apply those skills. So then to have today's theme, like, what skills do you need? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not certified anymore. I haven't taught in a classroom in many years. But, um, yeah, I have skills I need to be using. I I was a certified teacher. I, I was very good at it. Maybe I should be using those skills. <laughs> Oh, it was really funny. Um, so in my Celtic devotional, Holy Grandparents of the Universe, you have watched the world from its birth through many ages. I seek your silence that I may also grow in wisdom. I celebrate the vision of your enduring life for me, in me. The counselor of my soul, you quicken my soul's progress this winter day by the strength of your example. I look to your light to help me discover the track of this day's question. What skills do I need to be using? <laughs> I don the breastplate of wisdom, wrought in the nine jewels of the heart, dew of fairy women, spear of fairy hosts, blood of ravens, wilderness, wild, wilderness of eagle, ocean of seagulls, music of poets, love of lovers, children of mothers, wisdom of souls, Nine radiant jewels to cover my heart, to protect my soul on this winter day and this winter night. May the blessings of the guardian of the hollow tide, the keeper of winter's hearth, attend me this day as I go forth. I hope you all have a beautiful day. I think for me today, I need to, I've got an appointment at nine and I've got a list of things I am ready to rock and roll on today. Um, I have clients tomorrow. Um, my Thursday and Friday this week are kind of busy. And today is the day that I really need to crank into, well, actually Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Because Saturday I'm traveling and teaching my class in Missoula. I'm so excited about that. It's my first real like in-class workshop thing that I've done in four years-ish. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm just, today's the day I've got to get a list of things done. And I've been a little procrastinating this morning, but 
We're getting there. <laughs> Enjoy the sunshine, guys. If you have any, right now it's snowing here and I'm loving it. I'm loving the winter snowstorms. And Astra has been lovey and playful today. Um, and here she comes again. Yeah, she's gonna come to say hi. Um, I hope you all have a beautiful day, my friends. And take some time to figure out what nourishes you. I think underneath all of today is what nourishes your body. I think we have a lot of like people who are food motivated or their love language is food. I'm surrounded by them. And food has never been my love language. Um, gifting is my love language, making things, doing things for people. And um, food, I watched food in my home when I was a child being used as an emotional crutch. And I found that for me that was unhealthy. You know, I watched it be unhealthy for the people around me. And I fell into, I mean, I live with somebody that also has that tendency. So um, when I got really sick, that was actually part of me being sick is not realizing that, well, realizing it, but not knowing how to, how to work with that and how to work myself out of that. And um, food as a love language is naturally, I understand where it comes from, but our modern society is built on a cardboard box. You know, like coming out of World War One and World War Two, and the mass expansion of large grocery stores and um, food consumption, fast food consumption, um, which is so unhealthy in so many ways. The whole phrase fast food is awful and culturally we have got to reframe that. Um, it's just not good and I grieve deeply for the loss of people's understanding of what that means and what that does to their body. Um, when I eat naturally, when I eat in my natural form, <laughs> um, I make food. And I sit and I consume it over a period of sometimes a half an hour to an hour. And I read or I embroider or I do something else. When I'm eating in an unnatural place, it is consuming a whole, a whole meal in 10 minutes. And that is so unhealthy for me. And I can feel it and my body feels it and I know it when I'm eating the way I should, I consume with intention. Each bite is chewed and I think about it and there's a prayer that's involved and I take time and I do other things because I'm a doer. I, I, I'm often doing two or three things at the same time. Um, and as a health coach, one of the things that I work with all of my clients on in every aspect is what is your relationship with food and how do you go about being conscientious about how you nourish your body? Because when you nourish your body authentically, you nourish all of who you are. The spiritual movement, becoming more spiritual, is a layered cake of consumption. And that layered cake is feeding your physical body in an authentic, nourishing manner 
which then in turn feeds your mind. And then your mind also needs to be fed additional things that reinforce and educate. And your spirit also is nourished by those layers. And your spirit then intertwines and is a part of all of that growth. Um, one cannot be separated from the other, and yet we try to. And as we grow and nourish and support each other as a community, that is reinforced over and over and over again. So um, I kind of rambled there for a minute, but I, I knew that that needed to be a part of today's daily devotion, that it's not just this is the card, but where is the depth that goes with that? And what does it mean? And how can it apply to you? Food can be a big trigger for people. And so many people that I have known, and I've gone through it myself, is food becomes the emotional connection to someone else or a way to communicate with someone. And that's not really very healthy. If you want to connect with people in a social circumstance and eat, when the waitress comes with the, I mean, they're, they're trained to feed people and get them out. You need to, we need to, as, as families, as people who go out to eat or eat in our homes, we need to be conscientious about taking our time and not being in a rush. And half hour lunches are the worst thing in the world for us in a workplace. Like we need an hour. You need an hour to sit, read a book, slowly let your digestion work, go for a walk around the block, be healthy. But that triggers that whole other, why do we have to have five day weeks and six day weeks and don't even get me started on how unhealthy our Western work environment is. <laughs> but anyway, balance in all things, guys, balance in all things. Have a beautiful day. And I will see you tomorrow in prayer. Blessed be.